first thing we're going to do is we're going to bend the tabs on the bottom of the boiler in so that they're at a 90 degree angle to the, the boiler walls. <clears throat> and I guess before I start, I'll, I'll just mention here, you notice that it, the, the metal is a little discolored, it's got some, some splash marks on it from the jet where it was cut out. That's fine. Um, this is, it's all going to be buffed out and cleaned out in the end, and, um, and it, the spill is going to get really dirty as you work on it as well. So don't be too concerned with that. Um, well, you'll, you'll get it all cleaned up in the end. The tool we're going to use for this is um, sheet metal uh, benders. You can use a regular pair of pliers as well. What you want to do is basically line your pliers up with the very top of the tab. Clamp down on it and then just bend it, bend it at 90 degree to the boiler. So it looks something like this. Right after you have uh, all the taps bent, the next step is forming it into a circular boiler. Basically, you're going to be bending it with your hands. Um, if you have something like this, a big piece of PVC pipe or a coffee can or something to roll the copper on, that might help a little bit as well. Um, I'm probably going to do a little bit with this and a little bit with my hands. Um, you're going to want to be wearing your gloves for this. Alright, I'm just working it around here with my hands. Um, one thing to know about copper is that as you work with it, it's going to get, it's going to become more rigid. So the more you can bend, in the first pass, I guess I'll say, uh, the easier it's going to be to bend. What you want to do is just, what you want to not do is crease the copper. So just kind of use your hands, get some big easy bends, just kind of form it around. I like to over bend it a little bit so it's a little tighter of a, of a circle than I really need, and that makes it easier to rivet together. I think I'm about there. This doesn't have to be a perfect circle at this point, by any means. There we go. We'll get it perfectly around later. You just want to get it to the point where you can bend it around, line the holes up, and clamp it together. Okay, once you have the boiler pretty round, <clears throat> what you're going to want to do is secure one end with a rivet and a pair of your locking pliers. So you can pound rivets into the other end and uh, <clears throat> and make sure it doesn't fall apart while you're doing that. So grab, take one of your rivets and the, first of all you're going to be taking the big flat end that's going to be coming through the outside. Push it through the hole <clears throat> and then take your locking pliers and secure the rivet Okay. 
How's that going anyway? Okay, so I have uh, this end of the boiler locked together with uh, a pair of locking pliers and the rivet. The goal isn't to compress the rivet here, it's just, it's just to get the rivet through there and hold it together. On the other end, I'm going to take another rivet and I'm going to stick it through these two holes here. It's not going to go all the way through easily, there should be uh, some tension there. Um, and that's good because it's going to hold the rivet in place when we start driving it together. So stick the rivet in there. Like I said, you can hammer against a number of different solid surfaces. I'm going to use this little uh, four-pound hammer just to demonstrate how it's done. I stick my rivet through. Okay. I'm going to turn the boiler over, and I'm going to take my ball peen hammer. I'm actually just I'm not going to be hammering the actual rivet at this point. I'm going to hammer around the rivet to drive the copper down around the rivet.